Hello, and last episode we made this uh, control stack, and that's going to be important because in this episode we're going to go ahead and make some stuff to control. So uh, here we are back in the scene, and the scene doesn't have anything in it aside from the control stack and a skybox. So if we hit play, all we're going to see are some stars. And we can't even see the stars because the camera isn't pointed at the sky, it's pointed at the ground. Uh, so what are we going to do? Uh, well, this game features you constructing a ship, so we should probably allow you to construct a ship. Uh, now we're going to be constructing a ship using a grid, uh, a very simple grid method um, uh, in a two-dimensional plane. So we're going to have a 2D plane for us to draw a ship on, but we don't actually have any uh, surface, any 2D surface to catch all of that information with. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a real easy method and we're going to go ahead and create uh, a, a script called tile. And what this is going to do is it's going to handle all of the um, shenanigans that are required to place objects uh, and edit tiles. So when we start the tile will be empty and as we fill it in with whatever our cursor is filling it in with it will get filled with whatever that is. So we need to have an, an object here, and we're going to use the brand new, if I can find it, cube, sphere, cylinder, plane. What happened to the quad? Is this a quad now? No. Now I know that they added a quad in as an available... Damn. It doesn't look like they made it easy to find. Uh, so we're just going to use a cube. I was going to use a quad and save just a tiny amount of space, but you know, I guess it doesn't really matter. All right, so we're going to call this cube tile. Later on, we'll actually be replacing the mesh with the mesh uh, of whatever is on our cursor. So this is just a standing mesh that we'll use just to mark it as a tile. But we're going to need a material here. So let's go ahead and create a materials directory and create a new material, which we will call tile uh, blank tile. Now this blank tile material needs to be partially transparent so let's go ahead and do just that. And we're gonna make it a kind of blue transparent. There we go, like so. Easy enough, right? So the next thing we need to do is we need to turn that into a prefab. Well, actually we need to add the tile script to it. And we're going to turn that into a prefab. Prefabs. Like so. And then what we're going to do is we're going to actually make the main camera understand that we want to have a certain number of tiles. So we're going to need to have a new script, which we're going to call... No. Which we're going to call... Uh, ship creation controller put it on the main camera and open it up here we are so we're going to have public game uh, public tile uh, tile fab and that's going to be the tile fab that we just created but we also need a couple of other things public int width equals 10 height equals 10 that's going to be the size of our ship similar sim simple enough right we are also going to need to have a uh, an array of tiles an array of arrays can we do it like that I think we can I can never remember exactly which way oh I need to name it I can never remember exactly which way C sharp does it um, I think that's how you do it Just go through each, uh, no, not yield. Once again, uh, monitor develop has fallen behind and is randomly changing what I type. So we're going to go ahead and say uh, uh, tile uh, t equals tile instantiate tile fab. Uh, and then we need the position, so uh, uh, new vector 3. And then we're going to go on the X and Z plane for this, I think, just for kicks. X minus width divided by 2, uh, 0, and Z minus Z. Now there's no Z. Y minus 
height divided by 2. And quaternion dot identity. Like so. So then we need to make the tiles parent equal to, uh, well, no, we don't want to do that, because if we make the tiles parent equal to us, then it'll move with the camera. We don't want that. We just want to put it in the map. Like so. Uh, that should actually be all we need to do for now. Let's go ahead and take a look at whether or not that works. Um, so we actually need to put our tile fab in there, of course, then hit play. So you can see that it works. Uh, we've got some tile fabs. Uh, they're very dim, much dimmer than I'd like, but that's easy to fix. We'll go into the materials and make this blank tile much more opaque. Uh, the other problem is that the camera is pointed funny, so let's go ahead and make this camera uh, just point straight down. I think that's straight down. Yeah. And we're going to go ahead and change it into orthographic. Perspective view doesn't get us anything when we're just doing a flat tile surface. So that should work just fine. Hit play. That wasn't quite what I expected to see. Why are these all at Z of 2? No, no, they're all... Oh, they're all at Y of 0. I've gotten Y and Z backwards again. So if you are the sort of person who, like me, always gets Y and Z backwards because Unity does them wrong, that should be the first thing you check. There we are. So this is our tile map. Uh, I think we've got enough time to go ahead and make it do one more thing here. So what we actually want to do now is make that tile map controller, the ship creation controller, we want that to be the starting uh, controller. We want that to be the first thing in our control scheme. And there it is. So now that it's the first thing in our control scheme, we can actually go ahead and implement some controls. So we're going to need to have a ray. We're on a camera, so we can use the lowercase c camera. It gets filled in with whatever camera is on the object we're currently on. So there's our ray. We also need a raycast hit. And then we need to do if physics.raycast ray out hit. No. Thank you for falling behind again, mono. So physics.raycast returns a true if it hits anything, but the hit raycast hit uh, object will be what actually contains the information. So we're going to go ahead and say uh, uh, tile t equals hit.transform.get component tile. If not t, or if t equals null, then debug.log hit uh, uh, t uh, hit dot transform dot name plus isn't a tile, and that'll just let us know that we've hit something that's not a tile. But if we did hit something that's a tile, let's go ahead and change it. So we're going to go ahead and put in a uh, a special case uh, here which we're going to put in a tile script. Tile... need to pop up the tile script here. For some reason I have an unexpected... What is it talking about? I bet it just... Oh, I bet I just haven't saved. That's what the problem is. We're actually going to use uh, some quick little events for this uh, that'll make our life a little bit easier. Um, yeah, that'll do. So we need to do some delegates. Delegates, as you might remember, or maybe not, um, are a little bit complicated, and if you don't know how they work, you should go ahead and learn. Uh, so we're going to create a delegate called um, uh, ship creation controller event. <laughs> uh, and it's just going to be empty. Uh, the delegate won't take any arguments. And it'll have a return type of void. So then we're going to go ahead and create two events. 
one of which will be ship creation controller event hi uh, uh, d highlight. Uh, we'll only create one for now. We only need the d highlight at the moment. Later on, we'll need the highlight as well. So here, in what the reason we did that is because we're going to be doing something uh, here where we say tile dot highlight, and then we say uh, 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 we actually are going to have it pass. Uh, let's go ahead and just make it active here. Public static ship creation controller active ship creation controller. The reason we're doing it like this is just so that we don't have to pass this class around all the time. Um, it's a little bit easier. Oh no, wait, wait, that's not what we need to do. Uh, I'm trying to find a workarounds for things that don't need workarounds. I'm sorry, the whole reason we're using a, a delegate is so that we can make this event static. Alright, so t.highlight. Um, and what we also need to do is t.dhighlight. Uh, no, sorry, just uh, uh, if dhighlight does not equal null, then dhighlight. So what happens is we're dhighlighting everything, and then we're highlighting the thing that we just called. And the reason we're doing that is here, in highlight, we're actually going to sign up for that dhighlight. There we are. And then here we say... And what that means is that when we get highlighted, we actually sign up to get dehighlighted. So we don't have to keep track of who we're, of who's highlighted. We just we just know who, the the thing knows that it's highlighted. And when the other when when the controller says, "Oh, I need to dehighlight everything," it goes, "Oh, okay, I'll dehighlight myself." So what is it that we're dehighlighting exactly? Well, we're going to need to have a mesh filter like so. It might be a mesh renderer. I think it's a mesh filter. Is it mesh filter? Mesh, mesh, it's probably mesh renderer. Let's just go ahead and check. Um, the object that we're needing is in prefabs down here. Uh, it is in fact a mesh renderer. All right, because we're going to be changing the material. There we go. So down here we say mesh renderer dot material dot color dot uh, equals new color, and then we're just going to go ahead and make it a color that we will will be able to see real clearly. Like uh, for example, gold. And then when we unhighlight it, we'll change it back to being a more transparent blue. So I think I saw some errors. Let's go ahead and see what, what it's complaining about. There we go. So you can see that, uh, uh, actually I'm not sure how well you can see because uh, we don't have a... <laughs> Let's create ourselves a light. <laughs> Who would have thought? All right, so now we've got a light and we'll be able to see what the heck... No, that light didn't work at all. Oh, it's an area light. Ever since area lights got introduced, I accidentally click on them all the time when I want to click on a directional light. I don't know what it is. It's just magic. There we are. So now you can see that uh, we highlight just fine. And the dehighlight dehighlights to a color other than uh, what we might expect, and that's fine. I don't really care. Um, we can clean that up later if we'd like, but this is just a quick little way to let us highlight whatever tile we want to highlight. And if we were to click um, we actually would be able to sign up for a click event in the same way. Let's just go ahead and do that in this particular episode because it's the exact same thing. Uh, we'll just call it click. And what we're going to do over here in tile is we're going to sign up for it in the same way. Ship controller dot click plus equals click and down here ship controller click minus equals click and then of course we need to have a click uh, now in the click item we'll actually be checking the input here 
we don't have to be past the input. Uh, the input is global and we can find it. But over here in Chip Creation Controller, we want to say um, there we go and we'll just go ahead and put a debug in here just to make sure it all worked and that should be all we need for today click 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 by the way if you're ever confused as to why things aren't showing up down here check on the right hand side uh, it condenses all identical logs and just puts a number next to them alright so I will see you in the next episode where we will maybe start to think about replacing these tiles with stuff. <laughs>